Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayers for this Monday the 4th of March. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste, haste to help us. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because you are at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our opening psalm this evening is Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. That psalm really made me think about trusting and obeying. From where will my help come? The Lord will keep you from this time on and forevermore. Amen. We go straight to our Gospel reading this evening and I've chosen the Gospel reading from the Presbyterian um, lectionary from Mark 5 verses 21 to 43. A really familiar story I'm sure to us all. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. A large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all she had and she was no better but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it, but the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was speaking, some people came from the leader's house your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. 
He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said, Talitha, come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk. She was 12 years of age. As this at this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this. And he told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow. What a message of faith. What's our faith really like? Is it easy to have faith when the chips are down? Is it easy to have faith when everything around us seems to be crumbling? The Lord has promised to always be with us and we know that we can trust him for anything and everything we need in our lives. We don't see God with our eyes and we may not hear him like we hear other people, but we know he's always there and wants to hear from us. We have God's word to guide us through questions we might have. The Psalm 121 goes on to say that God will not let anything happen to us. In fact, he doesn't sleep. We need daily rest, but God does not. He never goes to sleep. He's always watching over us and taking care of us. In the daytime or in the nighttime, he is there. He wants to help us and loves us more than we can imagine. He wants to hear our prayers and always listens when we call. And I'd like to share a story with you. A lady was very worried about her husband. He had been very poorly for a number of weeks and didn't seem to be making any improvement. The woman and her family had great faith, as did her husband. His philosophy was what will be, will be. And he was not afraid of death. But equally, he wasn't ready, and neither were his family. His health seemed to take a step forward and then three steps back, and the hope was there, but it felt as though it was fading. The man had seemed to pick up when a call came from the hospital where he was, saying that they'd had to call 999 and that he'd been taken straight to the hospital with an emergency department. His family got straight in the car and rushed to be with him. When they arrived, he was being wheeled into a bay and he looked confused, scared, old and frail. The staff were amazing and got him stable, all while many, many people were praying. The next few days, he was a changed man and his daughter said, Dad, you keep bouncing back. God still has a purpose for you here on earth. Today has been one of the steps back for my lovely dad. He is poorly again, but through faith and through trust and the prayers of many, our hope is that tomorrow will be a better day. My hope is that my mum will sleep, 
knowing that my dad is being cared for. But we also know that when we wake in the night, God is there holding our hand, holding my dad's hand and my mum's, holding all of our hands in our troubles, our worries, our anxieties. Let's always trust and obey, for he knows best. Amen. I lift my eyes to the quiet hills, a beautiful song about, written about Psalm 121. And so we come to our cycle of prayer for this East Midlands Synod. And we pray tonight for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Derbyshire. And before we move to our intercession list, we're going to share the words for this third Monday in Lent that our wonderful friend Tom has shared with us.
And so for this, the third Monday in Lent, Tom shares a verse from that psalm. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. And Tom writes, while we have hit the snooze button for just a few more minutes, you are up delivering grace door to door. When we are daydreaming at our tasks about what, what we could do if ever we won the lottery, you fill others with hope which lasts forever. As we settle under our covers, hoping our fears are not hiding under the bed, you turn the night light on so we can see you keeping watch over us as we sleep. Amen. Those words lead us so nicely into our prayers for others. Prayers for situations over this world and prayers for people that we know and those we don't know, but who need the loving care of God this night as they sleep or as they wake, looking at the nightlight, knowing that it is the light of Christ. We pray this night for a peaceful resolution to the situation between the occupied Palestinian territory and Israel and all other zones of war and violence and humanitarian distress all over the world. We pray this night for Graham Galeb following surgery giving thanks for the medical team who looked after him. We pray this night for the Reverend Caroline Andrews, for Roger Allen and for Ruth, Reverend Ruth Allen in her care and concern for him. We pray this night for the Reverend Patrick Lidget, for Brenda Kenyon, for Ron Kenyon, we pray this night with Celia for her grandson, Alfie. We pray this night for my dad, the Reverend Brian Russell, and for my mum, Dorothy. We pray this night for the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr, for the Reverend Liz Adams, the Reverend Hamish Temple, and for Jean Schenk, and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care and concern for her. We pray this night for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery, for Father Andy, Moynier's parish priest. We pray this night for Barbara Turner in her recovery and for Janet Clarkson in her recovery. We pray this night with Ankatea for her friend Bea. And we pray this night with the Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian Davison for Susie, their daughter. We pray this night for Cheryl and for Prince and the family. And with Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. And we pray this night for John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. We pray this night for all those who grieve the passing of loved ones. We pray especially for Jean Davison, for those who grieve for her, especially for her son, the Reverend Brian Davison and the family. We pray for those who grieve for Norma Bradshaw, widow of the Reverend Tony Bradshaw, especially for her family and our church in Wellingborough. We pray for those who grieve for the Reverend Cecil McCauley, especially Pat, his wife. We pray for those who grieve for Don Buxton, 
and especially for the Reverend Maureen Buxton. We pray for all who grieve for Bishop Alan Wilson, especially his wife Lucy and the family. Father God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's say together now the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And to close this evening, we're going to listen together to the words of that great hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, sung by Lou Fellingham at Spring Harvest.
What amazing words. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen and good night.